Good evening, good evening, and welcome to the Essential uh, Immigrants Appreciation Event. Tonight, I am joining you from Hamilton. The city of Hamilton is situated upon the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. This land is covered by the Dish With One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and the uh, Anishinaabe uh, to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. We further acknowledge that this land is covered by the Between the Lakes Purchase, 1792, between the Crown and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Today, the city of Hamilton is home to many Indigenous, indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we recognize that we must do more to learn about the rich history of this land so that we can better understand our roles as residents, neighbors, partners, and caretakers. My name is Lily Lumsden and I am the chair of the Hamilton Immigration Partnership Council. I'm also the senior regional manager for the Employment and Immigrant Services uh, Department of the YMCA of Hamilton, Burlington, Brantford. The Hamilton Immigration Partnership Council um, is otherwise known as HIPSI, uh, is a community table that seeks to create a seamless settlement experience for immigrants to Hamilton. With partnerships, with partners from various sectors, including settlement, education, business, health, social services, municipal affairs, and persons with lived immigrant experience, we work together to create a welcoming community with relevant and accessible services. This year has been a challenging one for many of us. Uh, HIPSI stepped up to showcase the strength and resiliency of immigrants in Hamilton through creating an essential immigrants videos series. This, these stories have touched many hearts. These, very, these videos were positively received by the Hamilton community and our federal immigration partner uh, immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada. Tonight, we are gathered to give gratitude to our essential immigrants and to learn more about their role in our city. We encourage you to follow along on social media at Hipsy Hamilton for updates and to further spread our message tonight. And I am pleased to introduce, to introduce Bradley Henry to present an Indigenous welcome. Bradley? All right, thank you. Um, all right. <clears throat> yeah, way, high, 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 way, high, oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Bradley. Um, I have to say, drumming, the drumming performances always get me in my heart. I can always feel it deep in my soul. So thank yeah. you so much. And the yeah. fact that you're 15 years old just says to me that, you know what, there's so many more years that I hope I get to hear you <laughs> in the future in terms of um, more drumming performances around Hamilton. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, now it is my pleasure to introduce Norm uh, Schlielen, uh, Director of Economic Development at the City of Hamilton. Norm? Thank you very much, Lily and uh, Bradley. Uh, I echo those comments. Great, uh, great introduction there. So um, the Hamilton Immigration Partnership was established over a decade ago uh, as one of the first uh, and earliest local immigration partnerships in the country. Um, in 2018, we were very fortunate to have HIPSI join the economic development team here at the City of Hamilton. And I can tell you firsthand that they worked tirelessly to ensure that Hamilton continues to be a destination of choice for newcomers and a welcome community for all. Um, immigration is very essential to our economy and our livelihood. Almost two thirds of the population growth comes from immigration in Hamilton. And research shows that long-term immigrants are more likely to own a business uh, with employees compared to the Canadian born population. And recent immigrants are especially well-educated with over half having a bachelor's degree or higher. And tonight it is my pleasure to join you and uh, privilege to introduce Mayor Fred Eisenberger to bring greetings. Thank you very much, Norm, and uh, greetings to everyone that's uh, participating this evening and really pleased to be here to continue on with the great uh, important work that uh, that Norm spoke about and you know the, uh, the many years that this has been uh, ongoing and uh, how it needs to uh, continue in our wonderful community. Uh, as, as Norm pointed out, one of four residents was born uh, outside of Can Canada, folks that live in Hamilton. That means that at some point, in their life, they made a decision to move to our city, like my family did, uh, you know, some many, many moons ago in 1960, uh, when I was an eight-year-old, uh, my parents decided after some challenging times in Europe, in Amsterdam and Holland, that uh, immigration to Canada would be a positive step for them. And in fact, as it turned out, they struggled and, uh, and, and made their way through and their kids uh, obviously ended up with a, a better quality of life as a result. And so, uh, you know what, we, uh, we uh, appreciate all the people that come here to make our community great, all the great things they come with uh, that enriches our community, the, uh, the food, the music, various rituals, and uh, immigrants of all classes have strong, positive economic outcomes and become increasingly self-sufficient with more time spent in Canada. And certainly that was the experience that uh, our family enjoyed. Uh, my dad, uh, you know, worked at International Harvester as a, uh, an assistant to a gentleman that was from Manchester, England. And so he learned all of his English from him. And so when he spoke English, he spoke with a Manchester accent and was a plumber, steam fitter, pipe fitter in Holland, but uh, could never achieve that until 20 years after he actually arrived here and was finally able to, uh, to earn the kind of income that would have uh, made him uh, you know, a, a part of the middle class in, in our community. So we lived in geared income housing for the longest time uh, up until my, my late teens, in fact. And, uh, and then all the kids uh, were able to go on to colleges and universities and uh, certainly aspire to and, and got a much, much improved uh, quality of life. And in this particular instance, became the mayor of the city of Hamilton. So an immigrant from anywhere can uh, find and establish themselves in this great country of ours and uh, bring all their talents and their education and entrepreneurial spirit and uh, make a place for themselves uh, in time for them and themselves and, the, and their family. So I'm especially delighted to be here, uh, you know, coming from an immigrant family and uh, able to welcome all of you, uh, potential newcomers and newcomers that come here to want to raise a family and thrive both uh, personally and professionally. So great day to, uh, to celebrate, even in the time of COVID, uh, all of these things are still uh, essentially immigrant and as part of the essentially immigrant immigrant campaign uh, I thank you for your continuous effort to uh, bring awareness to the importance of immigration in Hamilton and in Canada so thank you uh, for all of your participation and thank you all for tuning in thank you Hipsy uh, Sarah Sarah Whalen and her team and Lily Lily Lumsden and, and the board 
for continuing to put time and attention into ensuring that we remain that welcoming community. We should and ought to be and are for uh, many and most of our immigrants coming into our community. So I really appreciate this time and I hope you have a great session today. And uh, we encourage you to continue on with that great work to ensure that uh, you find your rightful place in our community that is, uh, in my view still, even though this is an essential immigrant campaign, Hamilton for all, no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, if you're in Hamilton, Hamilton is your city and you have every, uh, every right and every opportunity to, and we should ensure that you have every right and every opportunity to make a great quality of life for you and your children. So thank you. And I look forward to uh, the rest of the session this afternoon. Lily, thank you. back to you. Great, thank you, Mayor, Mayor Eisenberger. Um, next up, the HIPSI team has created a short video of the interviewees and their message to the Hamilton community. This is footage uh, in their own words, uh, which you have not seen before. Um, and can we play the video now? You were telling me about Samuel. And so Samuel was once a mayor here. Um, and when Stalco workers went on strike, he supported them, even though the government didn't, um, didn't want them to strike. So it's something about Hamilton that I, I, once I settled here, I learned about what is Hamilton and all the different mayors. And this is my favorite place so far of Hamilton. Uh, trying to be emotionally and um, uh, uh, empathetically supportive to the patients, especially when the family the families are not around in the hospital. That has been more challenging to me. Uh, but it, that's what I love to do and uh, it makes it uh, worthwhile. Uh, the one thing I would like to, sorry, I'm being emotional, I don't know why. <laughs> one thing I would like to sell, tell my community is that uh, we've done a great job in bringing our numbers down. Everybody, everywhere I walk around, people are more cautious in maintaining the distance, uh, protecting themselves and others around. Uh, the other th challenge was, of course, uh, not only the mental safety, uh, emotional safety, it's does the physical uh, safety in terms of uh, being able to protect our customers, uh, our staff uh, from being uh, infected uh, by uh, COVID or uh, in danger for uh, any other reasons in terms of uh, the COVID uh, status. Uh, applying and complying with the City of Hamilton uh, rules and uh, recommendations was a very uh, big Actually, um, one of the most challenging times about this place, or my workplace, on this COVID situation, it was um, on my studies. Um, I was trying to go back to college to finish some upgradings, but because of this COVID situation, I wasn't able to do it because I was so busy at work, working so many hours. And um, it was very difficult for me. Personally, I live with my senior mother, and I uh, feared that I would transmit virus without knowing. So personally, I think I think uh, newcomers bring a different kind of energy to the community itself. Um, you never know; they ca they're coming to rebuild their life. So you find them in our health system, you find them in our, in our different social uh, systems. Uh, so I think it's always good to welcome them as they bring a different kind of energy. Um, for me, I would say personally, we are privileged to be in this country where we have healthcare professionals that are specifically dedicated to giving us guidelines. What I mean is, uh, we have public health. They are, we're privileged. It's a privilege to have public health because there's not a lot of countries that have a public health organization that just simply gives you a guide on how to basically navigate through the tough times like this. So I think it's best to listen to them and follow their guidelines because they're, that's their job. They're specifically there to create this menu, let's say, to help us navigate through hard times.
Right. Um, thank you. I, I enjoyed that, uh, that video. I had not seen that uh, yet. So thank you so much for um, giving me the opportunity to be able to hear those words um, from, from some of our uh, essential workers who, who are immigrants and newcomers to, to Canada. Uh, next, I'd like to uh, pass the torch over to um, our facilitator for tonight. And I would like to introduce Yudara Wirakun. Um, he is a, a HIPSI council member. He is the co-chair of the Research and Evaluation Committee. And currently he is a training specialist uh, at Mohawk College's City School Initiative. He came to Hamilton in 2015. And actually the reason for coming to Hamilton was to work at the City of Hamilton as a project coordinator uh, for the Citizen-Centered Service Delivery Program. So I'm going to pass it over to you, Yudara. Thank you, Lily, for that kind introduction. Um, it's an honor to be here today. Um, so when everyone was asked to stay home, uh, when the pandemic began, many immigrants continued to working to ensure that Hamilton received essentials like food, deliveries, and medical care. Uh, our hope at HIPSI through this work is actually to grow awareness and appreciation of immigrants' contribution to Hamilton and to highlight the impact of COVID-19 on the immigrant population. So tonight we'll speak, connect with the, some of the heroes actually filling in those essential roles. I would like to warmly welcome our friends, panelists, uh, who have featured on the video that you just watched. Rami Safi, Jesus Sanchez. Uh, welcome both of you uh, for the panel discussion. Um, so I want to ask, uh, first ask um, you, tell us about briefly yourself and when did you arrive to Canada? Rami, would you like to start? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, I actually uh, uh, moved for, for different countries before moving in 2007 to Canada with my wife at that time, and it has been now uh, 13 years. Uh, it was October 24th, 2007. So that's the date I landed uh, as a skilled worker immigrant at that time. Uh, and it has been yeah, 13 years since then, so. Thank then, you. Uh, yeah. And um, Jesus? Yes. Hi. Um, my name is Jesus. Um, I came here to Canada in 2014. We moved, I moved here from uh, United States. I moved here with uh, my wife and my kids. Um, and then I'm a personal support worker here in Hamilton. I'm happy to, that I can help people and look after people who really need us. Um, I know I, I have a passion. My passion is like helping people. I feel good about my, my job. I feel great about what am I doing? I make a difference and I love helping people. Like I do my best anywhere that I go. I always try to bring a smile with me so I can be contagious to another people, you know, like, especially in this kind of difficult times for everybody. Right. So I always try to have a smile with me and have a positive attitude and always do my best on my workplace. And I'm really happy to be here with you guys. And it's a privilege for me to be here with you guys and to just make a difference here in Hamilton and be able to help. And like the mayor say, if you were in Hamilton, it's our city too. So we're responsible for, for our city too. Great, thank you, Jesus. Um, my next question is, um, what made you choose to settle in Hamilton? Why Hamilton? And what supports did you find in Hamilton that helped you along in your journey? So uh, basically I uh, wanted uh, to be in a, a, a bit of a suburb area. It's not really uh, uh, compared, to, I, I'm not a big city uh, person. Uh, Hamilton is a big city, but uh, still it has that touch of uh, uh, the suburb area. 
and it has that um, identity too. Uh, many of um, uh, the immigrants move from all over the world and uh, everybody has their own uh, uh, backgrounds and uh, finding an identity to a place you want to live in is really crucial when you move. So that's mainly uh, the one, the, the main reason. Uh, plus the fact that I have been uh, also, I have had uh, some uh, friends from where I moved from and they were already starting their career here as pharmacists and being around will help also uh, in advice. Uh, the city is a great city. Um, it has uh, lots of uh, things to explore. I'm still exploring. Uh, and um, the biggest uh, uh, thing to keep in mind is uh, the way uh, uh, Mayor uh, Eisenberger mentioned it. Uh, uh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, uh, the Mayor Eisenberger mentioned uh, how he moved with his parents and how uh, usually it is uh, for the first generation immigrant. Uh, they do everything to make sure that their kids uh, get a better life. And uh, that's what... Uh, everybody moving wanted to have. Uh, we need to keep faith in our uh, 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 first generation immigrant in our systems, which uh, helps us to move forward in our life. And uh, in the fact that uh, 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 this land uh, uh, was also and still is uh, honored and uh, have uh, the natives uh, as part of, uh, of course, uh, uh, the origin of, of the whole uh, story of Canada. So uh, we all uh, uh, succeed, either we are born here or we moved uh, or we're uh, native uh, if we really uh, want to. And that's the greatest thing about Canada. I always tell people, you can be whatever you want here, uh, just decide and move on and you will be able to do it. Great. Thank you, Rami. And and I just wanted to ask you again, like, did you get any support um, uh, when you when you first came uh, to Hamilton? I, 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 to tell you the truth, uh, uh, at that time when I moved, I know it's not that long for many people, but uh, I wasn't familiar with all the uh, immigration services. But with time, I found out there is many support uh, through the city. And uh, I ended up being... Uh, uh, myself, a chairman for the advisory group for the immigrant and refugees, because I want uh, to make sure that people uh, share these, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, all the um, uh, work of HEPSI and all the support the city does uh, is, is good for immigrants. Uh, and that's uh, definitely uh, something uh, uh, I'm trying to spread the word all the time on. So, yeah, I got my support uh, uh, definitely through uh, uh, it wasn't systematic, but I got through uh, the support from the city in many cases. Great. Thank you, Rami. Uh, hey, sirs, um, what, what made you choose to settle in Hamilton? And what supports did you find in Hamilton that helped you along in your journey? Well, when, when I first arrived here to Canada, um, I arrived on Windsor, Windsor, um, Ontario. So it's like four hours away from Hamilton. It's a small town. It's a really, it's not a lot there, you know, to to do, but like it's a, really, a small town. It's a very nice town. I really love it. And then the only reason that I decided to move here in Hamilton was because back in winter, it's like not so many jobs, right? So I had to find uh, a better place for me and my family, right? So we decided to move here in Hamilton and then I start to work like a different job, jobs and stuff like that. So I finally decided myself, I wanted to be in somewhere that I can be able to help, to make difference, to be there for people who really need us. So I decided to be a PSW. I, I decided to go to school for it. And, and then obviously when I first moved here in Canada, um, I was like, I my English wasn't like very good back then, right? My my English wasn't the like the perfect one and stuff like that. So it was hard because I came from Mexico, right? So we speak Spanish. So the language for us is a little bit different. So we had to deal with that. And I had to like kind of soak it up and then try to study for myself to be 
uh, a better person for myself, for my family, and for everybody out there, right? So I always wanted to be in like the medical field. So I decided to just go for a PSW first to see if I really like where I wanted to be. So, and then, yeah, I moved here in Hamilton and then I like it. It's a, it's a really big city. I like it. The fact that we're like in the middle of like Toronto and Niagara Falls. So we're like right in the middle, right? So we have everything around. It's a, it's a good city to be. It's a good place to be. And then, like I say, I'm here, like, like our, our friend says, uh, in this city, you can be whoever you want. You have all the opportunities here. It's a privilege for us to be here in this country. We have everything. We pretty much have everything. We have all the opportunities that we want. We just had to look for it and work hard for it too. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I, I also agree with your point. It's a perfect location. That's what I really like about Hamilton too. Uh, my next question for both of you is that, how can we best support newcomers to ensure they become successful members of our communities? Rami? Or let's start with uh, Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, yeah, so um, uh, for, for support, uh, first of all, uh, the fact that uh, uh, advisory groups are a good uh, thing to keep having uh, and uh, mingling uh, people who uh, are uh, uh, first generation immigrants into it with the, with the proper, of course, uh, qualifications to, to help in this volunteer job. This is a very good way uh, to listen to the needs of uh, uh, of a newly uh, immigrant, uh, usually that's one thing. Uh, the the other uh, thing would be definitely uh, facilitating more uh, training sessions uh, to help people to find uh, jobs uh, that suits their uh, uh, qualifications. Many many people don't really realize sometimes that. There are all most of the jobs in Canada. Uh, they are really they are or, uh, organized or uh, they are regulated by uh, specific bodies. And uh, meanwhile, many of the immigrants carry lots of experience when they come. Uh, we just need to find the proper way to channel uh, this uh, through uh, our um, uh, city and through our experienced people who can help out and volunteer their time and work uh, to to help uh, people in their uh, finding uh, a job. Uh, the third one is keeping, uh, of course, uh, making sure to master or uh, to be able to communicate in English is a very uh, important thing. Uh, at the same time, understanding, and this is a very important thing, understanding the other side of the culture is important. Uh, we understand definitely that uh, when you move to Canada, uh, you definitely carry with you uh, your heritage. Uh, you like to have it, and then uh, you become Canadian, proud Canadian. Uh, how to uh, make sure that the other side uh, or your uh, colleagues understand your part of the culture uh, will help also to facilitate uh, and make uh, things easier uh, on, on many of the people that move on. So jobs, uh, culture uh, uh, change uh, management and culture management, uh, or what we call cross-cultural management is one of the things that uh, we need also to work on all the time. Uh, and uh, supporting, keep supporting uh, immigrants with, uh, with the systems that helps them to uh, reside in a decent home, uh, find jobs, uh, find support to their kids. Uh, and recently, with all this COVID in the last uh, few months, uh, we understand and realize how much mental uh, health is extremely crucial for us. Uh, the amplification uh, of the mental health challenge goes multiple times the way it is, uh, it was uh, with the COVID presence. So for immigrants uh, moving from other countries, uh, they already have a mental challenge when it comes to the fact that uh, they have to adapt. I'm speaking about myself. Uh, they need to understand and adapt to the change that happened. 
mental health is crucial to everybody and uh, minorities or uh, people uh, immigrating from different parts also has that uh, uh, women uh, uh, all the communities that uh, we can think of so uh, i think covid uh, um, uh, amplified that in a way that we realize now how important it is so mental health support for uh, immigrants is also crucial thank you rami Jesus? yes well uh like you say like immigrants we had to have the mentality when you first move into another place you have to come with that mentality that you're not going to be in the same place where, where you were born, that your language is going to be different, your culture is not going to be the same. Of course, it's always going to be there, but is, you're going to be in a different country where the culture is different, where the language is different, and no matter what, you have to deal with it. And then also, you have to push yourself. If you want to succeed in this life and whatever you go, you have to push yourself to learn the new language for the for that country or whatever you, country you go, because it's gonna be good for you. You got, you have to push yourself if you want to be something better. You have to push yourself no matter what. You had no limits. You always had to look forward for everything, and for all the newcomers, we had to you know they had to left the fear behind that you know some people they don't want to learn the new language because they're afraid, they're scared. They had to leave that behind them and they had to put that mentality and say, yes, we can do it. We can do this. And you can do anything you want in any place you are. And then like Rami says, right? We like, we are in a country where everything, it's like we have everything, all the opportunities, all the places like Hamilton can be support for us. Everything is there for us to support. So we just had to look for every everything and just look forward always and put that mentality that you have to be some, someone better always. Yeah, that's a wonderful message, Jesus. And also Rami mentioned about uh, education, employment, uh, um, and also job, job creation and stuff. I think we are really lucky to be in Hamilton that we have a supportive uh, city and also the education institutes in, in Hamilton that you know can support the newcomer growth. Uh, and Rami also touched a little bit about the pandemic too. So definitely we are living in a pandemic and it's challenging for all of us. So how has the pandemic impacted your work? And uh, what are the challenges you faced while working during the pandemic? So if we're talking about uh, personal and work, so work-wise, definitely we all know and realize that uh, all people working at the front line uh, have their worries. Uh, and, uh, and it was, of course, it's valid worries about the pandemic and uh, being in uh, uh, contact uh, with, with people who might be uh, infected and how they go back home uh, to their houses and uh, you know, they might uh, transfer that to their kids, their uh, loved ones. So that that worry uh, has been there. I always uh, say that uh, there is a COVID cloud over our heads and uh, everybody has that cloud over their head. Uh, people who believe uh, uh, in, in, in science, uh, and uh, I am a believer in science, that this uh, this virus is there. And those who don't believe, uh, they also have that COVID cloud over their head. Uh, the problem when you have a COVID cloud over your head is the fact that any problem you face, and we all face problems every day, any uh, issue that you have on the personal or work challenge, uh, it will be amplified multiple times because of that cloud. And that's what impacts everybody uh, badly. So at work, yes, uh, we have the fact that uh, uh, we, we, we all wanted to support each other, make sure that uh, if somebody is getting uh, uh, anxious about it, how to support them. If we are anxious about it, how to support ourselves. 
uh, you also have, uh, uh, if you are a leader, uh, you also have your moments where you want to make sure that, you know, uh, you also reflect on yourself and see that if you're anxious, you give yourself the time. Uh, you also want to make sure that your customers are safe. You want to implement all the standards that the city goes with uh, by making sure everybody is safe. These are the challenges. Being an immigrant and working in this environment, uh, we many of us get used to at least see their parents or uh, their brothers uh, overseas once a year or twice uh, or once every two years or somebody comes and visit. Unfortunately, this didn't happen this year. And many of us are missing their loved ones. Uh, some people lost even their loved ones overseas. And uh, that's a huge thing. Uh, uh, this is how uh, it's extremely fortunate uh, for people who have their uh, parents around them or their siblings around them. And uh, it's very rough on people who really have their direct uh, uh, relatives uh, away, 10,000 kilometers away. And that's a challenge because you are worried also about your loved ones overseas. And that also doesn't, uh, uh, that, that actually adds to the stress factors that you have around. So uh, I think it's uh, it's definitely challenging uh, for everybody, uh, but the impact is always uh, uh, there. And uh, hopefully, uh, with with uh, with what's going on now, with the vaccination, and hopefully with uh, the new uh, kind of tests that makes uh, things faster, uh, things will be resolved slowly, and people would meet their loved ones uh, soon. Yeah. We certainly we have to have the hope. And Jesus, uh, how uh, how has the pandemic impacted your work? What were the challenges that you faced while working during the pandemic? Well, it's been a it's been a very big impact, not only for myself, but I'm pretty sure for everybody, right? Like so many times, I asked myself, I. I never thought I was going to live something through like something like this, right? Who can be imagined where we were going to be on this kind of times? It's been, it's been really difficult for, like I said, for me, for everybody, because it's not just only here in Hamilton or just here in Canada. It's global. It's all over the world. So it's been a really tough times, especially, especially for, for my for my clients, for all the people out there, for them not to be able to go out or to not have their loved ones come to visit them or to spend time with them, it's just it's just so hard. It's a heartbreaking though because like like I say, sometimes they're we are the only person that they they see like all day. We're the only person who they see. And it's just, it's just really tough. Sometimes you just have to be tough to yourself. And um, it's, it's just difficult to see like this, diff this times and not able to do a lot for them or not able to, to bring their family or their loved ones to see them or spend time with them. I don't know, it's just so hard. And these times it's really, really hard. I think it's a, it's a really difficult time for, for many of us out there. And especially for our new, some new immigrants and sometimes their loved ones are probably away. And uh, so hopefully um, I'm pretty sure that uh, we all can go through this together. And then hopefully everyone, you know, if their loved ones are away, everyone can, Free night very soon. Um, that my next question to uh, to Rami is that um, Rami mentioned you mentioned that uh, you you are also an advisor of the Immigrant and Refugees Committee, and so you have been involved in volunteer activities in Hamilton. That's great to hear, and that's something we really wanted to see every newcomers. Uh, involved in these kind of activities. So uh, do, do, apart from that particular Immigrant and Refugees Committee, have you been part of any other volunteer groups or any faith groups or mentorship uh, opportunities? 
I would like to hear more about um, those volunteer. Uh, yeah, that's a great question, actually. Uh, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm proud to be Canadian because one of the greatest thing about uh, Canada is it's one of the highest countries in the world when it comes to volunteerism. The opportunities of volunteerism are huge and the impact of volunteerism is huge to the community and to oneself. Um, uh, I am part of uh, volunteerism uh, in terms of uh, uh, pharmacy operation, in terms of pharmacy in general as a Hamilton District Pharmacy Association. Uh, I'm also, uh, I did mentorship for uh, uh, maybe around the few like 10, 12 uh, different pharmacists uh, from different backgrounds in the last uh, 10 years, 12 years uh, to help them out uh, when they get their license in terms of uh, uh, finding uh, uh, support uh, at pharmacy and uh, learning uh, how things are done. Uh, so I was, I was mentored by other people too. So uh, it's a pay it forward uh, approach uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, it's, uh, I also, uh, when I started, I remember one advice came to me when I came to Canada, one of the people said, one of the things that you can volunteer, uh, your time for is go and donate your blood. And that was a great thing to do too, uh, because it does have a very, uh, nice symbolic meaning where you can actually, uh, share, uh, uh, depending on your health, uh, of course you can definitely uh, be part of a and regular blood donor. That's a great uh, thing to do. And uh, this is one of the things I advise uh, all the time that people, uh, if they are healthy, they definitely, uh, this is a very good volunteerism act. Uh, beside being in, uh, uh, with my, uh, 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 the Muslim Association of Hamilton, I try to be part of the events that uh, they share for the community. Uh, and uh, but not I'm not uh, uh, that regular in terms of uh, having a fixed uh, slot there, but it's part of what I'm doing. So uh, volunteerism is uh, is definitely um, a huge uh, thing in Canada. I I advise in Hamilton. There's lots of you know YMCA accepts volunteers, schools accept volunteers. Uh, there's always areas of interest. Uh, I also got the chance to uh, uh, be part of uh, a group uh, uh, in Canada where uh, people would donate uh, some money for charities uh, around uh, Can uh, Hamilton. Uh, there's lots of uh, groups, uh, 100 men uh, uh, and 100 women, and there's lots of groups that actually uh, that are there out in the city that helps support uh, food banks and different causes. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, I, there's lots of volunteerism uh, people can do in different ways. And uh, I, am, I definitely encourage every single, single immigrant to do something. They can always make a difference uh, from the very first day they come in. <clears throat> Thank you, Rami. And Jesus, uh, have you been part of any volunteering group or what community groups or experience you had uh, while you were in Hamilton? Uh, yes, I um, I haven't had the opportunity to be uh, part of any um, voluntary group. Um, I only did when I was doing my um, my personal sport work in uh, schooling. I did some volunteering on some um, long term facilities and. Um, that was part of the school and stuff, right? But like Rami says, it's always good to encourage uh, the newcomers or, or the new immigrants to always try to be involved with any kind of, um, like try to be volunteer or try to do something where they can make difference. And like with the, with the new immigrants, with the newcomers and everything, they can they can really do a lot, right? They can really help a lot too, and they they can do a lot of volunteer. There's always places like Rami says. There's the YMCA. There's like schools. There's like uh, long term cares where they accept um, volunteers. At this time, probably not because of the pandemic, but it's it's always it's always places where you can volunteer yourself, and 
make the difference. Thank you for sharing. So my final question for both of you is what is your message to the Hamilton community? What is your hope for the future? Uh, well, my message to Hamiltonians in general, regardless of their roots, uh, is uh, keep faith in your city. Uh, keep uh, being uh, uh, keep being Hamiltonian, proud Hamiltonian. Keep giving uh, uh, to your city and you'll get back uh, in a way or another, uh, giving your time, volunteerism, hard work, uh, and uh, keep your uh, spirits up. Uh, we are all uh, uh, proud Hamiltonians, proud uh, Canadians, and uh, we uh, will all uh, go through rough times and uh, just be empathic with your neighbor, empathic with, your, with the other person uh, in front of you, regardless where you meet them, at workplace or uh, at your neighborhood. Uh, empathy creates and kindness creates lots of uh, magic effect. Uh, respect everybody. Every one of us came from different cultures. There is no single culture on earth that uh, doesn't enhance kindness. And melting it all into one pot, like Canada, is the best thing to do for us as Canadians. Thank you. And Jesus, final word for you. Yes, well, I think Rami already take all my words. He already said pretty much everything. But like, like you say, yes, let's just, let's just stay, you know, like I say, as long as we stay strong together, we can all go through this together as well. And then like, let's just keep our, our mentality, like always looking forward for good things. They, 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 like my, my grandma always said, right? Like, doesn't matter after the rain, the sun is gonna shine. So after all this pandemic, the good times are gonna be back to normal. And then let's just, let's just stay stronger. And then we can all go through this together. Thank you, uh, Rami, Jesus. Uh, thank you, thank you for this enriching discussion. Really appreciate. And we are so grateful for the work that you do in the, our community. And also thank you again for being here today. Now I pass it on to Lily for closing remarks. Great, uh, thank you for sharing your experiences with us. Um, and thank you to everyone, um, everyone watching. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we would like to honor those who could community um, and making sure that patients are taken care of and families have food on the table. Uh, those are Mohammed Nawaf, uh, Priscilla Clarence, and Nadia Bazwa. All of our essential immigrants who are featured on the series will be receiving a letter of appreciation for their role during this exceptional um, during this exceptional uh, event, and uh, Hipsy will be mailing those um, mailing out those letters to you. As the year comes to an end, this season is usually a time for gathering and gratitude. We wanted this event to be a token of our appreciation to all of the workers out there who are making sure that we stay safe. They are doing their part um, to, and let us all, they are doing their part, so let us all do our part in staying distance until we can come together again. Staying apart does not mean that we, can't, that we cannot continue be, to be kind and compassionate to each other. So let us continue our work to support our community of friends and neighbors this year in safe and meaningful ways. Thank you and good night.